What if the solution to the world's metal scarcity, mining pollution, and rare earth element crisis wasn't in high-tech machines, dangerous deep sea ventures, or moon colonization, but in fungi? What if mushrooms, the quiet recyclers of the forest floor, could become miners not just for soil regeneration, but for harvesting valuable metals scattered in forgotten wastes and depleted lands? To understand this possibility, we need to take a step back and look at the global dependence on mining. Everything from your smartphone to your laptop to the very wires in your walls depends on mined resources. We dig deep into the Earth's crust, blasting through rock, disturbing ecosystems, and generating enormous volumes of toxic tailings. Those are the waste materials left after valuable metals have been extracted. Mining not only scars the land, but pollutes water, air, and communities. Heavy metals leach into rivers. Acid drainage from rocks poisons groundwater. The smelting process releases clouds of sulfur dioxide and particulate matter. Even the fuel powering these operations contributes to greenhouse gases. In response to these environmental and social consequences, alternatives like urban mining have emerged. This involves recovering metals from old electronics, spent batteries, and obsolete infrastructure. While effective in some ways, urban mining struggles with inconsistent supply streams and complex sorting processes. Much of our waste is a mess of miniaturized fused components glued, soldered and chemically bonded requiring energy intensive and sometimes dangerous methods to break them apart. At the frontier of innovation, we find proposals to mine the ocean floor and even celestial bodies like the moon and asteroids. These options promise access to untapped reserves but come with unquantifiable environmental costs. Deep sea mining could devastate unique marine ecosystems and threaten global biodiversity. Space mining, though still theoretical, raises questions about cost, governance, and sustainability. In this context, an often overlooked but promising approach gains attention, biological mining. This refers to the use of living organisms, particularly plants and fungi, to recover valuable metals from the environment. Among biological methods, phytamining is the best known. It involves growing hyperaccumulating plants on metal-rich or contaminated soils. These plants take up metals through their roots, bind them to organic molecules to avoid toxicity, and store them in leaves or stems. After harvesting, the biomass is burned and metals are extracted from the ash through leaching, electrolysis, or precipitation. This method is particularly effective for nickel, cadmium, zinc, arsenic, and even some rare earth elements. However, phytamining has limitations. It requires sunlight, takes time to cultivate, and may be impractical in tight spaces or extreme environments. Now, consider fungi. These remarkable organisms have evolved to thrive in darkness, to extract nutrients from decaying matter, to break down complex chemicals, and, crucially, to bind metals within their structures. Some fungi produce acids that solubilize metals, making them more accessible. Others grow in environments too hostile for most life acidic, radioactive, salty, dry. They don't rely on photosynthesis, and their growth can be rapid and efficient. This is where the idea of mica mining emerges. Mica mining is the fusion of two ideas, phytamining and microremediation. Microremediation refers to the use of fungi to clean up polluted environments. It's already used to break down oil, pesticides, plastics, and dyes, transforming them into harmless compounds. Fungi like Pleurotus tramets and Phanerochete have demonstrated these abilities. At Chernobyl, Fungi were seen moving toward radiation, suggesting not just resistance, but possible energy utilization. This process is called radiosynthesis. Microremediation often involves spreading fungal mycelium the root, like web of filaments across contaminated soil, 
into mulch, water channels, or through liquid sprays. Mica mining extends this approach, but shifts the focus from detoxification to resource recovery. It's about cultivating fungi that can absorb valuable metals, concentrating them in their fruiting bodies or mycelial networks, and then recovering these materials from the biomass. It is biological extraction for resource gain, not just pollution control. Fungi offer several key advantages. They can grow quickly and densely. They thrive in low light and nutrient poor conditions. They don't need pesticides or fertilizers, reducing environmental load. Their mycelium can colonize soil, wood, water, and even rocks. They can be deployed in places unsuitable for conventional agriculture or mining abandoned mines, urban ruins, underground tunnels, or polluted industrial sites. And they work. Species like Trichoderma harzionum have shown the ability to accumulate nickel at significant levels over 1% of their dry weight. Mucor javanicus accumulates samarium, a rare earth element, at levels three times higher than several others. Saprobic macrofungi, those that live off decaying matter, have demonstrated accumulation of lanthanum, cerium, neodymium, and other rees in natural environments with no artificial enhancement. Even without access to mining tailings, these fungi compete with the performance of phytamining plants cultivated on enriched soils. Economically, mica mining might be competitive too. The projected cost for nickel recovery through mica mining between 10 to 70 US dollars per ton rivals that have established biohydrometallurgy techniques. With minimal energy input, no need for fertilizers or complex machinery, and potentially lower maintenance, it offers a sustainable route in both developing and developed regions. Environmentally, it scores well. Using Fulci mattress as a framework to assess environmental impacts, mica mining outperforms terrestrial. And urban mining in terms of soil health, water and air quality, flora, fauna, and landscape preservation. It avoids tailings, emissions, and toxic waste streams. It offers localized employment opportunities and aligns with global sustainability goals. Yet, there are challenges. Not all fungi are suitable. Some accumulate metals, but in insufficient quantities. Others thrive in extreme environments, but do not tolerate human handling. The separation of metals from fungal biomass must be refined. Electrolysis, leaching, and precipitation still present environmental costs. There's also the question of scale whether fungi can truly deliver the tonnage of metals needed to meet global demand. But if combined with phytamining and urban recovery, mica mining becomes part of a holistic strategy, reducing our dependence on destructive mining. We are entering an age where biological intelligence may solve industrial problems. Mica mining is not a panacea, but it represents a radical rethinking of what a miner can be. Not a machine, not a human, but a fungus humble, ancient, and astonishingly capable. As the world's hunger for metals grows and the cost of traditional mining mounts, perhaps the key to a sustainable future lies not in the depths of space nor the darkest ocean trenches, but in the forgotten corners of a forest, the quiet decay of a stump, or the fine threads of a mycelial web under our feet.